My name is Jimmy Howard Peterson. My rank was Engineman Second Class Submarine Qualified. When we came back to the States, uh, we did a, uh, a mission to the Bering Sea. Uh, we were sent up there, um, and I think our main, main job was to look for Russians. <laughs> and we spent, as I recall, we were submerged for 28 days. We came up to snorkel um, every evening for about an hour, just long enough to put a charge into the batteries, and then we would go back down and we'd just sit there for, you know, the rest, another 23 hours. And when we snorkeled, um, of course, the only thing showing above the water would be the air induction, which was um, it opened and closed by uh, the conduction with the seawater and, and an air air cylinder, and when the water went over it, it shut, and engines would draw the air from the boat, and then it opened up, and we'd go. But and the only thing about snorkeling that was could be bad is when if the water stayed on top of it long enough, the engines are drawing it into air from the boat, and it'll bring the altimeter from sea level to. 6,000 feet, and at 6,000 feet, it trips out on high back, an engine trip out. <laughs> so if it's rough seas, you're going to have a um, valve opening and closing in the air pressure. You're going up and down in altitude, and up and down in altitude, your ears are always popping. If you have a cold, you got a real problem. So, um, anyway, we spent 28 days on station, and um, we were successful in our mission. We did get a picture of a Russian submarine, and uh, we went back to Adak, Alaska to fuel up, and we were supposedly going to spend the night. Um, I'm not sure what happened in that particular thing, but we pissed off the wrong people up there, and they wanted we had to get underway the same day after they fueled. And I heard another story in the other room about it, but I, I, I can't confirm whether it was right or wrong. Um, so anyway, what happened is everybody thought they were going to be here all night, so most of the crew had been out in the bar drinking, so first watch out was probably pretty intoxicated. With <laughs> I wasn't on the first watch, so I got a few hours out and break out of it. From there we went straight to Hawaii, which is another shock going into the sun, from the no sun to sun extraordinaire. I didn't realize how extreme that was, but it was, it was a nice change of pace to get out of there. And of course, then we went back to <clears throat> San Diego, and we did mostly just short two, two, one and two week uh, ops out of local San Diego doing, doing different things. Um, the, towards the end of the life of the Spitix, you know, we, uh, we were training, what was it that? Pull this up. Anyway, we were towards the end of the the life of Sphinx, we went back to the shipyards and, and um, I don't, I'm not sure what they actually did in the shipyard. They didn't do much because we were being decommissioned, so they must have pulled a lot of the stuff, like stuff off of there. But uh, we went back to, it was Vallejo uh, for the salvage and they decommissioned that sort of ship and it was got up for salvage, which is sad. That I know the captain had pretty put a push on to keep us going because uh, we had a high, high efficiency marks. They called them on the side of the sails. They had an E and they'd have a hash mark for each efficiency mark. And I think we had two E and two two marks, which means it was high performing, high performing crew and boat. Uh, and that was probably uh, that was the best crew. Of course, I only worked with one other crew, and we're, and we're still here, we're still going on. I don't know of any other crews that are doing that, and I'm sure there is, but I'm not aware of it. After they decommissioned that, I was sent to uh, the Razorback, which is also reported out of uh, San Diego, 